Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I will show you how I painted the base for my Harlequin Solitaire. It's a fairly simple process, uh, but I don't have many basing tutorials and this question comes up every now and then, even from close friends. So I'm going to make this video showing you my process and hopefully it will be helpful. If you like this video, please let me know what you think in the comments below and if you can, drop me a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. I'm going to start by talking about what I glued on the base to make it a little bit more interesting and to fill it up. I bought this uh, little box of uh, like cutting cut uh, like plastic bits that look like rocks from IKEA. This is called Kulort. I don't really know how it's spelled, or but you can find it in the flower section. You can also use slate or small rocks from whatever you like. Just try to find something that it's uh, very sharply cut so that it looks like sharp uh, rocks essentially. And uh, you can use that, you can use slate or just the whatever rocks you like or any other details that you can find. Also for the, for the skulls, I used the skull set from Citadel and that's a pretty awesome set. I would really recommend you get it. I have so many skulls, I don't really know what to do with them, so uh, I will really recommend you use them. I used two of them, uh, one with a jaw and one without, and just uh, laid them in front. I used uh, super glue to glue them to the base and just wait 10-20 uh, minutes so that it's completely dry. Once that's dry, I'm going to use PVA glue or white glue, and with this I'm going to cover uh, the floor on a layer of this uh, white glue and uh, just make sure to do it quick so it doesn't dry on you and try not to get into the places where you don't want sand. For that I'm going to use a stiff uh, old brush that I have laying around that its only purpose is to apply uh, glue and it's, it's, it, it is okay if it's stiff because it's going to allow you to reach areas that are underneath other stuff and uh, just uh, try to apply a layer of this. Next, while the base is still wet, I'm going to dunk the base on some sand and for that I'm going to use my mixture of sand. Uh, it is mostly uh, fine sand that I bought at a Michaels store, an arts and crafts store. It would be around the gardening or flower section and this is going to be just fine sand that it's a lot finer than you can find on a playground and I mixed uh, all of that sand with just a little bit of playground sand and a little bit of uh, small rocks so that it's a nice mixture and I mixed it up. At the end it should look something like this. It is a mixture of, of fine and medium grit sand that looks pretty good. I'm going to continue with priming the all of the things that I glued on the base with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I do this with a normal brush. You can do it through an airbrush but uh, because the model is already painted and I didn't paint the base before I'm going to just do it with a brush and you don't really need to do this you can apply paint straight up if you like I don't really prime bases like this but because I had the opportunity and I have the materials I did it just for the sake of doing this uh, whenever I uh, base a whole army uh, like this I don't really prime the sand but this time I did it the thing is that the skulls and the little plastic bits that look like rocks from uh, IKEA uh, really need a little bit of priming so the paint sticks, but I've uh, I've painted some bases where I don't even prime I just lay a couple layers and it's a little bit difficult to cover But it will uh, if you do a couple coats Once it's dry, I'm going to start painting the sand with gray and for that I use basalt gray uh, This is very similar to Mechanica standard gray and I'm going to use this to paint all of the sand I'm going to thin this color down a little bit more than usual just so that it sinks into the sand and paints everything. Uh, they, this means that I'm going to maybe need a couple coats if it doesn't cover that well. But most of the time I just do one coat because I'm going to shade it next anyway. And uh, also I forgot to mention that in between these steps uh, the glue needs to, to settle down for at least an hour. It needs to, uh, to cure and it needs to uh, dry for at least one hour. I would suggest doing a big group of models and let them dry all at the same time for at least a couple hours or overnight would be better. 
and uh, the primer just takes as long as uh, any other paint and uh, just uh, in between steps is gonna take about 30 minutes in between steps so I, I suggest uh, you to uh, do a big batch of models at the same time just paint your whole uh, whole squad of 10 and then uh, you can uh, do them all at the same time next I'm going to use inky bike darkness and with this color I'm going to start uh, painting the the ruin that the harlequin uh, solitaire is jumping over i'm just going to paint the middle part of the runes uh, where the runes are this is really subtle this is not going to show a lot but uh, when you're painting terrain and ruins you don't want the terrain to take away from the the model you don't want it to take that much attention so it's a uh, really subtle it looks a little bit dark, dark elder-ish, uh, so that's why I went with that. Because this model is gonna run as an allied attachment for my dark eldar, so it's pretty much... Uh, that's the reason I painted uh, Incubite Darkness, but you can paint it whatever color you like. Once it's done, I'm going to paint the skulls on the ground. For that, I'm going to use Sandry Dust, uh, as usual, as that's the way I paint the bone. And uh, just make sure not to paint on the sand or on other rocks. If you do, you can just clean up. Uh, use a little black to clean up the rocks, use gray to clean up the sand if you get any of this paint on them. Next I will be shading the sand. Uh, sometimes I don't shade the sand when I want the most, a more a brighter uh, color scheme, but this time I wanted it to have very deep uh, shadows. For that I'm going to use Nolan Oil and this is going to go on both the, the green on the ruins and on the sand. And this is going to create a lot more depth and it's going to darken the gray. If you want a lighter gray, you don't have to shade. You can just dry brush. Uh, it's whatever you like and uh, this is the way I like it. After that's done, I'm going to use Acrox Earthshade. And with this color, I'm going to wash the, the skulls on the ground. And that's pretty much it. Just the, the same process as we did with the other ones. Uh, just make sure to get into those eye sockets so, so they're very dark and to tint the whole uh, other uh, area of the skull and leave uh, some pools here and there on the sides of the skull so that it looks like a three-dimensional object. Next, I'm going to use Karak Stone and with this color I'm going to dry brush both the dark rocks and the ruins. And this is to make a difference between the ground and the rocks. You want them to contrast, so I'm going to use a warm highlight for the, those and this is going to make them pop and make it, them look like ancient uh, ruins. And you want a very dry dry brush so it only catches on those edges. If you go too heavy on it, it might look like a streaky mess. So be careful and make sure to have very little paint and just uh, pick those edges with a dry brush. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the ground with Celestra Gray. And this is a very bluish gray and it's a very light blue gray that is going to highlight the, the ground and it's going to make a little bit of a contrast between warm and cool colors on the on the rocks and the sand and that's the way it's going to I'm going to do it I, I like it how it looks this way and uh, this is inspired on maybe the underdark for DD &D because I like my dark uh, Eldar or Drukari to look like they're draws from uh, D&D, I like that style and that's why I went with a gray, uh, cool gray base and uh, kind of dark themed and uh, this is how I, I, I like to do it and uh, just uh, make sure to use this uh, very lightly and pick up all of the sand and if it mixes a little bit with the, the stones and the sand it doesn't matter it's gonna add to the look of the base. Next, I'm going to use a Shafti Bone, and with this, I'm going to also dry brush it. This one is not that important that it's super light. I want it all over the skulls. I want it to go over the, the top of the skull and uh, on the sides, but I want it to mostly catch on the edges, and so that it, so that it gives it a more natural highlight. Uh, but I'm not going to concentrate only on the edges. I'm going to try to do it all over the skull. Once that's done, I'm going to use Screaming Skull and with this color I'm going to uh, highlight all of the uh, edges on the skulls with a small layer brush. I'm just going to pick the eyebrows and the, the cheekbones, the top of the nose 
and any other sharp areas that might need a highlight so they stand out a little bit more and this is going to be uh, pretty much it everything that I do for this uh, for this model if you see the overall look it's a little bit monotone it's a little bit uh, uh, muted and that's the way you want your bases to look you want them to look different from your model so that the models stand out and the base just complements it you don't have to do it like I do it but uh, this is uh, the way I this is my rationale and this is the way I think and if you like it you can uh, do it the same way Next, I'm going to use uh, Surface Primer Black again. And with this color, I'm going to just paint the rim uh, or the outer edge of the base. You can paint it whatever color you like. Some people paint it brown and that brown would be a Steel Legion brown, I think. That's the way that it looks better on the edges because it's a grayish brown. But I always default to black most of the time unless the miniature is very, very dark and it starts making problems. You can pick any other colors like gray or brown and uh, that's it. Just paint the edge and you're done. And this is the finished model. Uh, this is a very basic way to paint bases in my opinion. It's not very fancy. I'm not using any weathering powders or anything like that. But uh, it's very effective and doing the base, it's a very important part of painting models. It really sets it in an environment and it makes, like, makes it blend into the terrain and makes it blend into the model. If you use blank bases, they sometimes look like they're not uh, somewhere, like they're just floating there. And uh, that looks like, imagine like if you draw, you don't, you have to draw a horizon line be, be behind your drawing so it, that it looks like it's somewhere and not just floating around. So that's the way when doing bases, it's a, basically the same thing. So that's it, uh, that's my base and I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful and if you did please like the video, comment on it and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. That really helps me out and thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed, great! Thank you very much for supporting my channel and if you would like to become a patron there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.